Hi, my name is Kendall Perry. This semester in COM 350R, I decided to follow PETA, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, mainly because I have a huge interest in animal rights and I wanted to get to know a little bit more about what they do and how they do it. Their mission statement reads, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals is the largest animal rights organization in the world, with more than 6.5 million members and supporters. PETA focuses its attention on the four areas in which the largest number of animals suffer the most intensely for the longest periods of time. This is in laboratories, in the food industry, in the clothing trade, and in the entertainment industry. We also work on a variety of other issues, including the cruel killing of rodents, birds, and other animals who are often considered pests, as well as cruelty to domesticated animals. PETA works through public education, cruelty investigations, research, animal rescue, legislation, special events, celebrity involvement, and protest campaigns. That is from PETA's website when you read about PETA. So the main spokesperson for PETA is Ingrid Newkirk. She is the co-founder and president. PETA was founded in 1980 and, you know, Ingrid Newkirk really just wanted to learn more about animal rights and she wanted to make a difference because she realized how horribly these animals in shelters were being mistreated. She first became an animal protecting officer for Montgomery County in Maryland and then became the District of Columbia's first woman poundmaster. She then became the head of animal disease and control of DC's Commission of Public Health and then was further named one of the Washingtonians of the year. She first had the idea to start, like I said, because she realized how poorly these animals were being treated in shelters and she actually went in and had to put most of those animals down because they were being treated so poorly and no one should have to suffer like that. So in 2013 PETA announced the scientific and regulatory expertise of PETA and its affiliates are consolidated to form the PETA International Science Consortium and they accepted an accredited stakeholder with this agency that oversees the largest chemical testing program in the world um, the Science Consortium also works with the industry and private research facilities and governments to promote non-animal tests around the world. Um, they're considered to be a definitive stakeholder. Um, they help provide financial support for the development of non-animal testing methods. And it's a great opportunity for the organization because the stakeholders' financial stability um, has great funding towards, uh, towards PETA and is a huge help. Um, so stakeholders, like the consortium, are invited to annual meetings to vote for resolutions to help save animals and replace animal testing with non-animal methods. Um, they also work with the consortium to create a number of campaigns that reach out to other chemical, pharmaceutical, and medical device companies to achieve their goals of saving animals and replacing animal testing with non-animal methods. So interestingly enough, some of the communication strategies that PETA has developed um, throughout its years as um, Ingrid Newkirk has been their co-founder and president, have been very controversial. Um, they really strive to grab the headlines around the world and, you know, spread their message of kindness towards animals to millions of people. Um, Newkirk actually states, it is sometimes necessary to shake people up in order to initiate discussion, debate, question of the status quo, and of course, action. So I found that this communication strategy that they have been using has worked very well with the media and the public to help grab the attention very quickly. And you know these tactics really get people thinking um, about animal cruelty and hopefully um, have them realize how wrong it is and to make a change. A few of PETA's key messages are very attention worthy. They, they really grab your attention and make you really think so some of them are, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, very universal saying. They also state, wearing someone else's skin is wrong. Climate change is an animal rights issue too. And lastly, animals are not ours to experiment, experiment on, eat, wear, use for entertainment, or abuse in any other way. And you know, that one really got me thinking because you never really understand um, how our animals in this world are really being mistreated, especially in the entertainment industry. I know there was a movie that came out, I think it was A Dog's Purpose, and there was a scene with a dog that was really struggling in the water, and they just threw that dog in. I guess he really didn't know how to swim, and it was all over the news about how they were mistreating the animals in the entertainment industry, 
and what they can do to help, and PETA jumped onto that quickly. Um, so yeah, these messages um, really help grab the attention and hopefully and effectively have other people jump on board with PETA and their mission. It's almost like an essential, these key messages are very powerful and essential to the success of PETA. Um, going on with media coverage, the media has portrayed PETA in a controversial light for years, you know, whether that be positive, negative, you know, neutral. They really, you know, they put out those stories to hopefully either affect the way we all look at PETA in a positive way or a negative way. Um, one write-up on the organi organization was about Steve Irwin and his, his death. The headline states, Google, Google condemned by PETA for celebrating Steve Irwin. He was killed while harassing a stingray. And the media relays the following key message, animals deserve to live as they want to, not as humans demand. And I think that is absolutely huge, especially, like I said, in the entertainment industry. Um, PETA described the situation and Irwin as not a true wildlife warrior. Um, PETA, PETA and the media are really promoting exactly um, what the whole statement is about regarding Irwin. And Newkirk provided a strong statement regarding the issue and said, PETA must ask who commissioned these dangerous hagiographic hey cartoons of a man who died while harassing a stingray, dangled his baby while feeding a crocodile, and wrestled wild animals who were minding their own business. This fawning, ignorant tribute is a slap in the face to a vast majority of people who acknowledge, acknowledge that wild animals are entitled to be left alone in their natural habitats. And that really hit the media hard. You know, they kind of just shut down right after that. And they were, they were just like, you know what? They're right. PETA's in the right there. PETA is also involved with social media um, along with Ingrid Newkirk. They are currently active on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and a few others. Their Twitter page currently has 1 million followers. Their Instagram page has 964,000 followers. And their Facebook page has 5 million followers. And, you know, most people can say that PETA has always had an informational tone on their public-facing channels, but they can always be very snarky with the way they want to guilt trip their followers and, you know, have people get involved with PETA. Um, the organization is all about love for animals and their rights. They post a lot of statistics, memes about situations and different circumstances, and informational articles about why they do what they do. Um, the, uh, the organization also handles opponents, detractors, trolls, and any negative comments towards them with poise and professionalism. They also handle with a little bit of humor. Um, like I said, you know, they have a lot of humor with their stuff, and they can be sarcastic with some replies, and I think that really engages their audience. They also provide a call to action within their tweets and posts on their platforms. For example, you can help animals suffering in the fur industry here. And, you know, they provide a link. And here's what you can do to end the abuse. And I think that's really great of them to do. Um, Newkirk and PETA have really used social media to help um, receive support and maintain the organization's key messages and their public images, image in a positive way. And, you know, it's been, it's proven to be very successful and it's also a little daring at times, but they really grab the attention of their audience. As for corporate communications and any improvements I have for them, so like I said, they have been known to use controversial tactics in order to grab the attention of their audience. They state on their website, We will do extraordinary things to get the word out about animal cruelty because we have learned from experience that the media, sadly, do not consider the terrible facts about animal suffering alone interesting enough to cover. It is sometimes necessary to shake people up in order to initiate discussion, debate, questioning the status quo, and of course, action. So Peter really tries to make their actions colorful and controversial in hopes to grab the headlines around the world and spread the message of kindness towards animals and, you know, get that to millions of people. And again, this type of approach has been really successful. Like I said, they are the largest animal rights group in the country with more than 6.5 million members and supporters worldwide. The only thing that I would have for PETA as a recommendation with their corporate communi communication is to really try to shed a positive light um, through social media. And whether that be understanding that some people can't always look at the horrible negative effects of animal abuse, animal cruelty, and all of that. You know, sometimes it's nice to see, oh, well, we have a win here because this company decided to go cruelty-free. Something like that. I think that's a lot easier. And even if they were to show 
um, more positive images and happy photos of other of animals to you know boost up their engagement in a positive way and show that they're not just all about why they kill or why people kill or abuse animals. So for my spokesperson interview, I interviewed Melanie Huscroft, Derek Maxfield, and Shalane Maxfield. And Melanie and Derek are a brother-sister duo that um, co-founded Unique, El Unique Products. And they also have a foundation. Um, it's called the Unique Foundation where they help women um, or men that have been sexually abused as children. And their whole mission is to uplift, empower, and validate women or men all over the world and to show them that there is light at the end of the tunnel if you've gone through some sort of trauma. And they also provide a retreat up in the mountains in, here in Utah that, you know, it's a one week long retreat that really show women that you can be whoever you want to be. Your past trauma, to, trauma does not define you. And they go through various, you know, self-defense classes and, you know, just trauma healing um, opportunities and therapy sessions that really help them become who they're who they were always supposed to be no matter what and I think that after interviewing them I really found more of an insight on PETA because Unique is also a cruelty free organization through their cosmetics and their skincare and I think that you know they may not you know PETA is all about animals and Unique is all about helping women and, you know, uplifting, empowering, empowering, and validating them. But the fact that they are cruelty-free really puts a connection with them, and I think it helped me understand a little bit more about corporate communication through PETA and corporate communication in general. Um, after taking this course and following PETA, I completely view corporate communication in a different light. I always knew that um, there was a lot that went into it, but I thought it was a little bit harder than it looked. You know, um, you know, you really see people on social media and doing, maintaining and managing a social media page is hard as it is. You know, we see us as college students trying to get the right pictures in our feed or the right filter. And if we don't get enough likes, we get upset or we want to delete it. But, you know, for corporate communication, even for as unique or for PETA, they really have to figure out and implement a strategy to engage their audience and, you know, they try to perform better each and every day. They have to meet quotas. And if they don't, they don't really grab the attention of their audiences. Um, lastly, you know, this course has really helped me understand all the necessary steps in order to be successful as a spokesperson in the corporate, corporate communication world. Um, it's very intimidating, and I think it's a little of the unknown. That's really scary. But if you have all the necessary steps and you you study the concepts and you know practice makes perfect I think you have a great shot at it and it's been really helpful and I really enjoyed this course and following PETA I've learned quite a lot thank you